Would you mind uh, sharing your thoughts on, uh, you know, the so-called cutting and bulking? You have to eat a whole bunch of food and then you have to train really hard for a couple of months and then you have to deprive yourself, severely cut your calories, do a ton of cardio, lift weights faster for a couple of months, et cetera. What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Good strategy or bad strategy? Well, I, I think it would depend on the individual. I, I, I would be cautious. I, don't, I, I would not defend it as a, as a good strategy. Strategy. I, I, there would have to be exceptions to the rule. Well, let me let me approach it from this, and I don't think a lot of people appreciate this. Well, anytime you're in a caloric deficit, you're, you're it, it's it's not your friend for building muscle. And if you're trying to live a bodybuilding lifestyle, you're trying to build muscle mass, which most of us are in this space. Um, you, you don't want to be in a caloric deficit. And I'll, I'll give some examples here. Uh, uh, Twenty percent caloric deficit, which is not extreme, that has been shown to reduce muscle protein synthesis by 20%. That was over a 10-day caloric deficit period. Another study, same group, um, a 20% caloric deficit significantly increased muscle protein breakdown by 60%. So there's two studies taking uh, the cellular processes of, of building muscle in the opposite directions. Another negative um, cellular, or actually we'll call this one a systemic negative outcome of dieting is anabolic resistance. This has been shown in males. This is where your growth hormone, once it's released, it typically, men, much of that will, will stimulate the production of IGF-1, which is a very anabolic hormone in the liver. When you're in a caloric deficit, that conversion is disrupted so that your, your IGF-1 is suppressed. And what that does is that, that normally would act as a negative feedback loop to growth hormone. So normally growth hormone goes out good. It increases IGF-1, really good for building muscle. When dieting, IGF-1 is suppressed. It doesn't tell the pituitary gland to stop making growth hormone. So growth hormone continues to be output which isn't bad for fat loss, but without IGF-1, you are, you're, you're essentially really shortchanging your potential to build muscle mass. So again, let me just summarize. You're decreasing muscle protein synthesis. You're increasing muscle protein breakdown. You are in, introducing an anabolic resistance environment in the sense that you're disrupting the IGF-1 GH axis. None of those things are good for building muscle. They, they, they all exist in a caloric deficit environment. Now, that's not to say you can't build muscle in a caloric deficit. It can happen. There's plenty of research to demonstrate. Well, there is research to demonstrate it, but it's not to be expected. It's not the norm. It, it can happen. It's the exception to what generally happens. So every time you're in a deficit, you have to, you have to come to the conclusion I'm not going to build muscle or I'm clearly not going to build as much muscle as possible. So I advocate for a, what phase are you in? I like to just make things simple like you. Three phases. You're either in a muscle building phase, a maintenance phase, or a fat loss phase. If you're in a fat loss phase, go ahead and be in a fat loss phase. Um, don't be aggressive. Take your time. But when you're done, get out of it and stay out of it. And the maintenance phase is really what I would ideally be in a, a body recomposition phase where you're trying to gain muscle, um, maybe lose some body fat in there, but there's nothing extreme. And then if you're in a muscle building phase, uh, a slight caloric increase, that, that makes sense. Uh, keep protein high, maybe you can increase your volume. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm uh, philosophically against extremes. Uh, it, and again, I, it's not like we have research on this. I guess what we have is anecdotal real world research, but extremes are, it's, uh, you're going to shortchange yourself one way or the other. So hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, I think so. We agree. And I think we just use different words. So when I talked about bulking and cutting with people, I always talk about, I mean, really extremely low numbers. We're, we're talking about an extra 100 to 300 calories a day, depending on the individual, that will be the bulk. And we're talking about cutting. I mean, depending on how fast they need it, it'll be somewhere between two and 500 calories a day. But that's it. When, when most people refer to bulking and cutting, that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about increasing their calories, five, six, seven, eight thousand a week. They're talking about no yeah i'm serious they're talking about 
cutting 20, 30%. I mean, th this is how most people go about doing it. And then they, they can't understand why they don't build muscle. And they think when they're these big bloated balloons that they're strong, but it's just because they have extra weight on their body. They've gained a little bit of muscle, but they can actually move more weight in the gym due to their own body mass. And then when it comes time to cut it off, they get upset. They say, oh, I lost all my muscle. It's like, well, no, you lost some muscle, but you were actually mostly fat. You didn't, you didn't build that much muscle. Uh, you just had a lot of fat on you and you didn't think you did. That's all. Uh, so anyways, that's, that's bulky and cutting. Again, I think we agree on it. It's just you don't want to go extreme uh, one way or the other that's detrimental to your, well, really long-term progress, but also your short-term progress too, I suppose, depending on how you look at it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I would imagine that's, that's a young person's game. If, if you do that, the older you get and you try that, you have to work so much harder. And I hear this from females. I even hear it from males. So <laughs> it's be careful if you're going to swing in those extremes, especially that bulking extreme, because at some point, if you want to actually show the muscles that you have, you're going to have to do the work. And that work gets harder the older you get. And how many people you know been at permanent bulk as long as you know them? <laughs> I'm, bulk oh, I'm, bulking, yeah, they... I'm bulking, I'm bulking. What are you going to cut? <laughs> uh, it's just anyway, the default so... lifestyle. Of... I know. <laughs>